Corn is the principal source of sweeteners in American diets. So what these subsidies do is to lower the cost of the ingredients that go in processed foods, particularly high-calorie processed foods, and they make those foods cheaper. Currently, the government subsidizes corn, corn, yeah. corn, and more corn, and very little fresh fruits and vegetables. But corn is a stable that is not only used for, for food, it's also used uh, for the tremendous animal industry that we have in this country. So it's important uh, that corn continues to grow in America. Do you believe we should plant less corn and more fruits and vegetables? Well, that you can't make that uh, that determination from Washington, D.C. The government already controls the way food is grown, processed, and consumed in this country. There are already government policies that are involved in every aspect of the food chain, from production to consumption. We want the government to be involved in personal eating behavior in a more healthful way. Here's another example of a massive government subsidy which contributes to obesity, soybeans. Most of the soy that people eat is not in its healthy form, such as soy protein, but in the form of oil, including cooking oil and margarine. Soybean oil is the largest source of added fats in the American diet. As for fruits and vegetables, if Americans were to follow a healthy diet, the Department of Agriculture says that nearly twice the number of acres of fruits and vegetables would have to be planted. Why do you think fruits and vegetables do get so little support from the federal government? Oh, I guess um, uh, you could say our, our lobbyists aren't as good. Uh, maybe we haven't had the tradition. Do you mean that? Uh, other aspects, other divisions of the food industry are better lobbyists than you? We've not had traditional subsidy programs, so there's not an ingrained group in Congress that's there fighting for the program, fighting for the fruit and vegetable program. We're talking about huge agribusiness companies uh, that own thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres. And these are, of course, the people who give the largest campaign contributions to members of Congress. It does make you think twice about all the symbols of agricultural abundance that we see in the nation's capital. A reminder of how important subsidies are in the political system and how hard it will be to change that whatever the impact on the nation's health. Do you hold the Congress accountable for subsidizing the wrong foods? No, I do not. I think that is a decision that Congress makes, and I'm not going to criticize Congress on the decisions they make as far as food products. Why do you think no one in government has made the connection between agricultural policy and obesity? I don't think, I really don't think it's uh, as, uh, as you have stated it, Peter. I don't think that there's any direct correlation out there that agriculture policy has been set up uh, and in some insidious way to subsidize things that are going to be bad for our health. I didn't suggest it was insidious. I'm suggesting that there is a possibility that government subsidizes more food, which you would say, as the country's leading health officer, is bad for us, and subsidizes less those foods, which you would tell us are good for us and we should eat. And that has also been throughout the ages. And uh, Congress has made those decisions, and they're political ones, as you know, Peter. And I don't think you're going to change the political arena as far as subsidizing agriculture in America in the near future. Well, the Secretary is probably right. But with so many voters in the country desperately trying to lose weight, you might think some clever politician would devise an I'll make you thinner platform it would at least question for the first time how federal agriculture policy helps to make us fat. We'll be back in just a minute. Americans probably don't think very much about government food policies when they're in the supermarket, but maybe they should. The cheapness of the food ingredients encourages the food industry to produce processed foods that sit on supermarket shelves, have very cheap ingredients, and can be sold at high prices because they're branded. Processed foods are typically made from a mixture of sugar, water, flour, starch, fat, artificial colorings and flavorings. And you could make almost anything out of that. Puddings, snack foods, beverages, those are dirt cheap to produce. The food is nothing. It's the processing. That's where the profits are. 
A typical supermarket may have 30, 40, 50,000 products, most of it processed food made with government subsidized ingredients. In 2002, supermarkets sold $174 billion worth of processed food. Food industries pushed on mass distribution of low cost products. That's their strategy. Jim Tillotson is a professor, but in the 1970s, he worked for the Ocean Spray Company. For years, my favorite drink was orange juice, but cranberry juice cocktail is a smashing new taste. Tillotson figured out how to make more money by replacing expensive ingredients in Ocean Spray products, like real fruit juice, without people noticing. You could make a drink that was very good, probably more inexpensively, by using some fruit juice, sugar and water, and a very fine flavor system, and people couldn't tell the difference. Since sugar was expensive, Tillotson turned to that inexpensive, subsidized corn sweetener, high fructose corn syrup. So we were able to reduce the price and be profitable. And as a matter of fact, at the time I brought my wife a Volvo, and I, we always refer to it as a sugar wagon, because my bonus came from being able to save the company a lot of money using high fructose corn syrup. People asked me, well, weren't you concerned about eventually that people would get fat from this? It never crossed our mind. Absolutely never crossed our mind. With obesity on our minds, we went to the Food Marketing Institute's annual convention in Chicago. This is where the packaged food industry unveils its new products. It's chock enormous. It is chock enormous. All those subsidized farm ingredients are being turned into products like these. There's a half a pound of meat in each jar. Microwaves in six minutes. These are interactive beverages. It actually is a product designed to emulate chewing tobacco. It's a Latino-inspired beverage. We couldn't quite believe what we were seeing here. Thousands of new products. What I like to say is Yoohoo is like an everyday sort of thing, three or four times a day, whereas your Yoohoo double fudge is more like a dessert. Free samples. We're giving them away today. And while a lot of the products looked familiar to us, everyone was telling us that they had the newest thing. We have over 100 new products. It's white with a little tropical flavor, and for us, that little sense of newness. When you look at all the products introduced by the industry in recent years, one thing is absolutely clear. The vast majority are foods that Americans should be eating less. Meal dessert. So it's like your post yoo hoo hoo If you look at the new foods that are being marketed each year, Probably 90% of them are packaged foods, very often junk foods. The tip of that food pyramid, what you should eat less of. Last year, there were more than 2,800 new candies, desserts, ice creams, and snacks, and 230 new fruit or vegetable products. When we were looking at the mix of products your industry has introduced in the past 10 or 15 years, it looks like you are giving people a greater choice of food which government mostly thinks are unhealthy for them and less choice of those which are healthy for them. I think that the food industry is providing a, a wide variety of choice and certainly if you look at some of the recent market trends uh, you're seeing a, a major increase in the good for you foods category. Well here's what we found of all the products introduced last year thousands of them only 131 of them even claim to be reduced or low in calories and the more of these top of the pyramid, low nutrition, high calorie foods they introduce, the more.